Hello, everyone. Does everybody have their headphones on? Hi, Amin. How are you? I think you're going to be interested in this. Um, welcome. Wow. Okay, now, now, now I'm not sure that I even want to be here. Sorry, Chris. Uh, because we have qu quite a few amazing musicians in the audience. <laughs> so, uh, can you, oh, there you go. I guess I'm going to have to sit down. Otherwise, uh, I'm in the way of the presentation. So, uh, we are here. We are talking about MIDI 2.0. We have four days of content about MIDI 2.0. And um, I am the uh, chair of the MIDI 2.0 working group on orchestral articulation. So, when we were looking at what profiles we were going to do, uh, we wanted to select the ones that we thought would be most impactful. And so, uh, one of the ones that we demonstrated this morning, and you can go over there and check it out, you can check out an, a Roland A88 Mark II and Synthogy, actually a, a actual working prototype of the piano profile, which is pretty amazing. Uh, but this next one that we're going to talk about in this session is the orchestral articulation profile. And um, it is the perfect example of something that really needs to be standardized. And, and, and what that standardization is, is um, how many people here do film scoring? Good, we have the right people in the crowd. Uh, there are lots of wonderful, wonderful orchestral articulation libraries, orchestral libraries that have articulations, okay? And what is the one thing that drives you crazy about all those different libraries? They all use different key switches or a CC message. They, they, and so you, every time you change a library, you have to remember which notes to do the switching on, okay? And so um, when we started working on this problem, um, we got a couple of people uh, who we thought would know a little bit about that stuff. Uh, so the first person we got, and I will introduce him and he can tell you a little bit about himself. We got Mike Kent, uh, who is the chair of the MIDI 2.0 working group. And, uh, and is actually wrote the actual spec, uh, and it, we're we're very close to being completely finished. So, Mike, uh, just to tell tell us a little bit about your work, just in in the MIDI two working group and what you do, and maybe a general uh, uh, outline of profiles, if you could. Sure. So, MIDI two point specifications were first published in twenty twenty, and we've been updating and adding extensions to that. And one of the core um, requirements for MIDI 2.0 is a bi-directional connection for devices to talk to each other and say what do you do and how do you do it and have some details about that so that they can they can understand each other and configure to work together really well so once you have that bi-directional connection um, we do something called MIDI CI MIDI capability inquiry so a device asks, what are, you, what are you capable of doing? Can you do all this MIDI 2.0 stuff? And one of the things that they can say is, yes, I do, and I conform to a specific profile. And a profile is a collection of MIDI commands to do a very specific set of things. So if it's a piano, it'd say, I conform to the piano for profile. Therefore, you can send me these 88 notes. The velocity curve should be like this. Sustain pedal should be be like this, and here's where the half pedal area is. That's the pr piano profile. In the orchestral articulation profile, what we want to do is standardize the messages to select the, the um, various articulations. And so a device could say, I'm an orchestral plugin, and I understand the orchestral articulation profile. Therefore, send me MIDI two notes with the articulation in them and I know how to interpret that. And every device that says, I conform to the profile, does it exactly the same way. So they can receive the same data. 
So now the key is, or the big benefit here is, I can enter all of my articulations, and the articulation is tied to that note, not tied to some switch that happened earlier in the sequence. And so if I write out a line, and this note has vibrato, and the rest are, are, are not, this is a short note, mercato, and now I've got a legato, that all stays with the note. And so if I take something I wrote for the violin and copy it to another track, and I have a PowerPoint presentation okay, that's going to go through yeah. all of that. So Sorry. If I copy my, it to another my. track and put it on another sound, all of those articulations stay with the notes or another library. Yeah. So that's the idea of the, or, the target of the orchestral yeah, so that's, profile. Yeah. So the real, we'll, we'll go into the details in a second, but the real point is, is that it's in the MIDI note on. Okay. And uh, so, Chris, just give a guy, just give a little bit of your background. Just tell us who you are and why you were interested in the orchestral articulation profile. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I've been a composer for t film and TV for 40 years, and uh, I've always been working back and forth with sampled instruments and live instruments, and uh, it, it really have a, a or heavy orchestral background, uh, working with London Symphony and various various orchestras as well as. You know, I actually I actually created the first Emulator 2 sample library. Uh, um, it goes way, 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 way back. Um, and uh, so this just was a natural for me. You know, we're also making some of our own products, which I'm not going to go into now, obviously. But uh, it, this, it was just something that seemed like a really natural thing for me to do. Cool. And uh, so... Um we have one other person who is a very, very core part of this team. His name is Peter Schwartz. And he was scheduled to give this presentation. And then uh, uh, on uh, Wednesday, he called me up and, and said, I'm really sick and I can't make it. And so uh, I wasn't even planning to be on this panel, but now I'm moderating the panel. So that's the way it goes. It's a NAMM show. You got to do what you got to do. Um, so this is the actual, one of the things about MIDI 2.0 is we have an expanded message, okay? So m m the MIDI 1 note on is not changed since 1983. But with MIDI 2.0, we have expanded areas. It's a bigger message. Uh, and so we can, we can do some stuff with that. And so this is what the profile is all about. And we'll go through and we'll actually kind of explain to you later on what the different parts of those things are. But inside, when you turn on the orchestral articulation, we use this thing called an attribute type, and then we have attribute types and subclasses. We'll explain all of this, but it allows us to do very, very, very detailed articulation mapping. Um, so when every note has its own articulation in the MIDI note on, you don't need extra MIDI messages. You don't need to send a, 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 a key switch or a CCC. It's right inside of the MIDI note. Uh, and it eliminates a lot of uh, key switching chasing issues. So um, here's the real benefit to people who are writing scores is it's easy to select between different libraries. You can just take the MIDI track, copy it to something else, and you can use a different library along with it. Or you can just reassign it to a different library. All of the articulations remain intact and musically correct. Uh, there's another thing that it does is uh, you, can, um, you can also copy instrument parts like everybody who does scoring knows you got to hawk in it right so you got to take the flute part and you want to put it on a violin well now if you select that violin you can just take the track again and copy it and now you can play back that part and the articulations are meant to be musically equivalent so that that flute part it's not going to sound like a violin anymore but it is going to do the, ar the articulation equivalent of what happens with a flute. Um, and so you can take instrument A, copy it to instrument B, and play back the track. And because it's in the MIDI note on, 
That's all you have to do. You don't have to do any further editing. There's another thing that we worked on, which is really important, which is called fallback. And this is this is was this was really something that Peter did a lot of work on. And the, the idea of fallback is if you have two libraries and you write a track on one library and then you select another library, but it doesn't hap happen to have a particular articulation, then it falls back. It falls back to the very first thing in that set. So it's a, it's a way that you have backwards or backwards compatibility between different libraries, which is really important to do. Um, I'll say one other thing about this and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into some of the details and I'm gonna let Mike handle all of the details of that stuff. When we did this, and we, this was true of the piano profile as well. Um, when we did this, we realized that this is a, a it is it is science and engineering in the sense that we had to create the protocol to be able to allow people to put in these different kinds of articulations. But it is art to select the articulations that are assigned, and that's why we leave it to the sound designer to make the choice. And I'll give you kind of a crazy example that I think will happen. So you take a string part and you write the string part and it has these different articulations that have like a, uh, you know, a long sustain sound and then you have a short staccato sound and then you might have something that sounds like a trill. All of the articulations that, that you know uh, in music. And then being me, being me, I would take a library of machine tools and I would map it from the string part and I could create a library that was emulating the, the, the articulations of strings with something that wasn't a violin at all. You want to allow people to be completely creative. And the other thing that we did with that is we have manufacturer specific articulations. So if a library has things that we didn't include and Chris made sure we included every single possible articulation. Did do you have a, a guess of how many articulations we actually have? Uh, it's, so there's 60 uh, types. Of, I'd uh, say roughly 60, probably maybe more, maybe more. Yeah, I, I I'm doing a rough count of it in my head, and uh, and we'll be able to do that now because we'll be able to see some of those. I think so, it's close to 100 articulations it, are defined. Yeah, at least, at least. So, Mike, I'm going to go through. I'll run the PowerPoint, and you, you can kind of see it there. Uh, you can see, see it here. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, in the MIDI 2.0 note on, uh, we've extended beyond MIDI 1.0. MIDI 1.0, you had a note number, and you had uh, velocity, and that's all you had in the note. So, now we have these new fields. So, one of the fields is attribute type, and it tells you what the extended data is. And so, we've assigned... 16 attribute types to say what's in here is orchestral articulation data. And so that's the attribute type field. And um, following that is a velocity field, which is now 16 bit. And then we have eight fields that we use for this orchestral articulation. So the first one, um, uh, this attribute type uh, calls up these different attribute uh, classifications. So we took all of the normals and put them into one attribute type. All of the shorts, staccato, spaccato, staccato, and so on, are in one classification. All of the trills are in one classification, and so on. And so the attribute types are used to tell you what classification is going to be found in the other field. Okay. So then the next field that applies to this, this selection is subclass. So within one of these classes, for example, the normals, there will be up to 16 uh, variations. And so in the trills, you'll find um, a trill on a single note, a trill on, on uh, one semitone, a trill on a whole tone, and so on. Right. So uh, that's subclass within a classification. Um, and, and then we have variations. And so if you've got a 
a, an attribute, uh, sorry, the, the subclass of gestruckin. We can have 16 variations of gestruckin in there, and that's the variation field. Or if you've got uh, sons of vibrato, sons of vibrato, you can have 16 different variations of that. So each one of these uh, articulations that we've defined, uh, a library can provide 16 variations. That's before you get into variations of round robins. Peter went through all of the subclasses. Yeah, Peter went through all of the subclasses, so I'm just going to lay them out there. This is an example of an attribute type and the subclasses just for staccatos and shorts. I mean, between Peter and Chris, we would, be, we would go like, no, that's enough articulation. And then they would come up with, no, but there are people who do this. And we'd go, okay, we'll put it in there. We have the data, right? Uh, so you can see we, there was a tremendous amount of work that was done on this in terms of the research. The other thing that we did is we held four or five meetings with the largest of the orchestral library developers. We wanted to get their feedback to say, is this actually possible to do? What, what do we need to do? What are the things that we need to include? What are the things that we shouldn't do? And we got their feedback so that we were very confident that when we adopt the orchestral articulation profile, which we hope will happen sometime this month, I'm hoping because the design is all done, it's all written, and it's uh, in 30-day review right now, which means that very soon we'll be able to vote on it. And once we vote on it and it's adopted, then developers will be able to take that specification and they will be able to write against it to enable their, their, their software things. I'll say one other thing and then I'll turn it back to you, Mike. The most difficult part of this is what are we going to do with the DAWs? But all of the plugin formats already do it. All of the plugin formats already have per node articulation built into them. Logic has it, Cubase has it, Multitrack Studio has it. So all we're doing is we're connecting the MIDI to node on to the thing that's already in the DAW. So that's that's not a bridge too far. I mean, that's that you're, you're already doing the same thing now with key switches. And quite frankly, I think somebody might develop a piece of software that somebody might develop a piece of software that takes a mini one note on and then it's a little shim and it puts the mini two note on articulation data in it and sent it to the DAW. So I don't think it's going to take years for this to be implemented because the infrastructure is all there. I, sorry, I'm still going through the attribute, attribute types for staccatos and shorts. Yep, uh, we got it. Bar talk pits, yes, it's there. Uh, with, with actually 16 variations of your bar talk bit, it's if the library has. Oh, okay. I'm still not done, sorry. Okay, now we're to variations. And each one of those has 16 variations. This is a very complete specification. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Want to talk about the next one? Yeah, so the next field is a direction field. So for each one of these articulations, you could tell bow up or bow or down direction. Uh, or you could just say to the receiver, I don't know which direction you decide. Um, and if it's, a, if it's not a violin uh, or string, uh, won't string this with, then the direction field is used for left hand, right hand on a snare drum or that kind of thing. And so there's definitions in the spec to how, how to apply this direction field, uh, primarily for bow instruments, but also for other instruments. Uh, we also have string, string number assignments. So if you definitely want that A to be played on the A string, then you can call for that. Uh, but if you want that A played uh, on a different string, you can call for a different string as well. Um, and so that's another field that's in there. 
So, yeah, so there's one more field that's in there, uh, and I might have deleted the slide that it does. It's for round robin. So this is this is a good example of the feedback we got from sample developers and, and for people who use this in the field. If you, if you use round robins a lot, and every library does use round robins, every once in a while there will be a round robin that is like not so great or a little bit out of pitch or something, and it drives you crazy. Well, now you can just, you can send a round robin reset message, and it'll, it'll send it back to the first one. So th this was something, that, again, that was, we got the feedback from people to say, no, 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 this is a problem that we have in the real world when we're trying to write a score, and can, how can you solve the problem for us? Uh, so I'm not going to bother to go through all of the descriptions for that. You'll, we will put the uh, this PowerPoint up online, and you can download it. We give everything away for free. Um, the last thing that I, I'd like to talk about, and then I'm going to try to get set up to to play your video, Chris. Uh, and maybe you could talk a little bit about the guidelines because. Talk about the work that you did in writing. Talk about the work that you did in writing the articulations. You know, you, you, yeah. Well, well. First of all, rule number one: never trust Wikipedia, and and also don't even trust your own background. Even though I've been orchestrating for for years, there's a lot of techniques that uh, musicians use all the time that they don't tell you about. And they'll see you see the guys you're on you're on the session. I don't know how many times they got there. I thought, okay, I've articulated this thing all up thinking again. I have written every single thing for them to play it. They should just run down, right? No, the first year violin's always sitting there with his pen out, scribbling all over it in the hieroglyphs. You know, I, and I thought, I go, what the thing? I spent hours doing that. I says, well, you gotta understand, you know, that this is gonna be, you know, where we wanna have this single thing. I go, oh, yeah. So, so, so what I did was, I, even though I have this, I know better to know that just because I think I know something, it means automatically I know nothing. So, uh, so I called up all my first chair players, and I said, okay, this is my list, right? And they're all in England because that's where I did most of my recording. And I said, this, okay, this is my whole list. Well, that just won't do, good boy. That just won't do at all. Oh, yes, you forgot about this one. And then about that, you know, how many types of Colino do you have? Well, like 50. But you know, it's not no, it's just like three. But uh, but anyway, there are things you know, I just would never know, even as a composer, as an orchestrator, I just don't play it. Um, anyway, so uh, I mean, because you don't normally write those things in the score. That's usually what the, 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 the soloists do. So anyway, they give me that information, and so all the stuff that I've gotten. And if you look at the spec, there's descriptions of all the articulations. I'm proud to say I did not write those the descriptions. Those are written by the first chair players. They gave the actual description. So none of that is from Wikipedia. Uh, and anyway, uh, so I had to do a lot of talking and a lot of, you know, going over these things with these guys. I would write something and go, that's not entirely accurate, really. It has to be done like this, you know. So, yeah, that's it. But anyway, over, a, to, to, I would say, close to six months to finally get that ironed out, get everything on there, you know. How long? How long is that document? It's got to be. Oh, well, it's like three, four pages or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, but three or four pages of very intense descriptions of articulation. No. Uh, so, I, I, are you ready to play? I am. Video? I am ready. Okay. So let me just give you a before it plays. Let me tell you. Yep. Let me tell you what I made. Okay. I thought, hey, this is cool. Why don't I just make an encoder that is a uh, articulation, uh, orchestral articulation encoder which is an interceptor that intercepts the keyboard going into your DAW, and then it's our desktop operation, and we have kind of like a Denny's menu, where you say, well, I think I want this, this, uh, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and then you hit a preset, but you're gonna say, but I just wanna give you the kind of like gist of it. And then you, you would hit your preset, and now you can call off that preset, whatever you want on the fly. Look, this is one thing that's really important about this. This is what got me really excited about this whole protocol. How many times, if you've been trying to do a punch in, and you, you're, it's a very metronomic thing, it's really four on the floor, you know, it's like, it's like really a hard thing. 
And so you get to the end of bar four, you go into bar five, and on bar five, on the downbeat, not a little bit before, not a little bit after, you want a new articulation. So what do you do in today's world? You have to sit there and kind of go, yeah, with your key switch, just and hope to God that it, that it didn't land at bar four, you know, key switch, right? I mean, how many of us have had that experience? Yeah, right? So this is the cool part. This is, this is the really cool part. So as soon as, you, so let's say you're, you're, you're hitting stop and you're right here, you're, you're, you're gonna wanna punch in on bar five. Well, this is really cool. No sweat, just hit your preset. Because guess what? The next note you play is gonna be whatever your preset is. So you don't even have to wait, you don't even have to wait for the, uh, uh, for the, for the, for the counted bars. You don't have to wait for that. You just hit stop, uh, next preset. Wait, 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 bar five, you start playing and boom, it's a new articulation. No delay. No, anything that to me as a composer is like, oh, thank you, you know. And uh, not to say that everything else is good, but, but just on a day-to-day -day use, that to me is just like, man, that's priceless. And that's what I, I so, so I said, hey, what? Yeah. So now, now let me show you what I did, or what we did with my my programmers here. Oh, is there any audio? There should be audio with this, but if not, I'll kind of look at the screen and kind of pretend I'm doing a talkie. I can narrate. I'll just do a live narration if you want. Siempre problemas con el técnico. I don't think it's in all the way. There you go. Our articulation encoder allows you to change MIDI 2.0 articulation settings on the fly via our programmable buttons. These buttons can be assigned to our preset keys. These are not standard MIDI 1.0 key switches. Rather, the keyboard keys are used to change between MIDI 2.0 orchestral articulation presets instead. We label the first three buttons in advance with our desired articulations. First button that we have program is button 1, Arco, 20 players, down bow, and so forth meaning we want to play as many pitches as we can within the play range of the fourth string, the lowest pitch string. We start by selecting the musical instrument type in the left column. This determines which attributes are relevant to each music instrument type. We choose strings. Next, click the attributes button within the right column to reveal the attribute types. For this example, we select the core sounds. We now select the desired subclass, in this case, sustains and strikes part one. Next, we select the variation. Remember, variations are user assignable, and these are the selections for our library. And for this preset, we select Arco 20 layers. Now we can look at the articulation display window to review our first three selections. Next, we click on the Note On Direction button to reveal the three options. We select the second option, Downstroke, and the articulations window immediately reflects this decision. If no selection is made, then the display will show the default zero in the note on direction box. Finally, we click the string selection button and choose the four string option. The preset is now complete. If no selection is made, the display will show the default zero in the string selection box. Programming the remaining two buttons is simple since the only thing that changes is the number of players. To do this, we copy the settings from button one 
updates these settings onto button two, then reopens the stage of strikes part one and select our L10 players. We performed a copy and paste operation into preset button three in advance. Now let's see how our preset buttons respond to our keyboard switches. So the one thing I want you to be clear about is, yes, he was using a keyboard. He was using a keyboard to input it, but it goes into the MIDI two node on. It's not a it's not a key switch. It's the data goes right into the MIDI two node on. It was just an easiest way to modify a program he already had to do the, the, the thing that we wanted to do. So we are now gonna open it up for questions. Uh, and Lawrence is gonna come around. Is this on? Yes, it is. I didn't see any distinction between bonafide and true legato and just sustain, so they played more than one note. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a different the, message, though. The, there are some, some legato, um, legato articulation markings in there. This is, um, this is called the note on orchestral articulation profile. And so it's whatever we can put into the note on. There, in the future, I think we will uh, extend this articulation with other profiles that are like multi-note multi, multi -note, um, expressions. So this is not complete all of, of orchestral articulation. For example, dynamics are still, still you know, levels and, 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 and fading, fading notes in and out, so on. All of that has to come uh, on top of this, but this is the beginning, which is the note on articulation. So there is something like that in it, with that. But the ability to, for example, mark four or five notes as a phrase or ten notes as a phrase, that's something to come in the future. And um, there are many, many already has fairly extensive legato capabilities. They're just not encoded in a way, in a spec, really, that is like as clear as a profile is. I think that's coming, though, in the next couple of years. We'll continue to extend this, I think. Yeah, one of the reasons that we want to focus just on the MIDI note on is because when you get into phrases, you actually have to think about the relationship with notation because notation will go, a MIDI note on is a MIDI note on is a MIDI note on, but when that's another part of, of the massive effort that we have uh, tomorrow, uh, Mike is going to be doing something on the SMF2, which is the standard MIDI file 2, uh, which is going to do things that will include, uh, it'll be a portable format, just like S SMF1 was, and that will include things that where you'll be able to include notation files, audio files, video files, and MIDI files into one big container. I don't mean to belabor the point. But in most of the popular string libraries, there'll be a different key switch for legato and a different one for sustain, because the legato is only gonna do single lines that are super duper connected, whereas the sustain is gonna allow you to play chords. So am I still gonna need key switches for that? Legato is, legato is, is earmarked as one of the sustains. Oh. Sustain without legato, sustain with legato, oh. are, are both earmarked in here. Yeah. They're both defined. Chris would never let that get past him, trust no, me. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean. Uh, very grateful that all this is happening. I'm sure there's many of us here that are like, oh, thank goodness. So this is, for some of us, this is just lights going on all over the place, 60 times 60, so thank you. Um, there are a couple of uh, utility programs out there that are already doing some of this. One of them is by Babylon Waves, it's called Art Conductor. And many of us are using that because we just have to think staccato, you know, staccato, and somebody has killed themselves putting profiles together for almost all the sample libraries. So your example of taking flute and putting it to here, the articulations already match. Can you make sure that as you develop this, you're in sync with what has already been done by some of these other companies, including Fabulous Maze, including the MP spec, which has done a lot of, you know, 
ahead of time the work in the market. We get. Obviously, you should be the efficient spend, but yeah. let's look for compatibility. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, we want we want as much feedback as possible. Right. And so, you just contact me, info at mini dot org, and I'll I'll get it. And yeah, so, what you're creating is a table, a grid, a set of map instructions, yeah. Yeah. and all manufacturers can consult this table. Yeah. And the table can get updated and sent back to all of the manufacturers. Right. Yes. Okay. Mike and I remember years ago when the timpani was listed as part of the string section. Oh, we won't get in there. Right? When, uh, when General Mitty first came out, Tiffany was listed in the string section. So when these things change, I just want to make sure that we have you know, three people know that joke. So anyway, um, so that this table, this wonderful grid that you're laying out, has been updated whenever, you know. Yeah, and, and, and the other change. thing, as I mentioned, we have manufacturer specific things. So if a manufacturer wants to do, wants to do something, Truly indeed. I mean, right. like a, they oh. have their own attribute types. Right. Like a bow Tiffany. A bow Tiffany. A bow Tiffany, <laughs> exactly. And on that other thing, you talked about the idea of taking one particular flute and assigning it to another flute, the articulation to move. If my violin patch has pizzicato violins in there, if I take that to the flute track, there is no pizzicato flute. Will it can you gain some sort of placement? In other yep. words, spiccato flute if I've got pins in my violin. Yep, but but you know, when you dig into the table, you see that there are some things that have equivalency and some things that don't, right? And if it doesn't have an equivalency, that's what the it, fallback is. For. That's what the fallback is. Term you got it. Yeah. Thank so you, you, so you much. hear, you hear the note. You don't hear the articulation sure. you want, but you know you got. But to there's a default, it, right? Thank you all so much. So what's the heart of it? You need to do this. Uh, is there a software? We can't hear you. Only a software here, or only software. Or have a hardware. No, this will work with with software and, and hardware. It, 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 this is a mini, mini works with hardware and software. It'll work with anything. I, I, work, I, I work and consult for Yamaha. And, and I believe that it, it, it could be implemented on Yamaha hardware. I believe it could be implemented on Roland hardware. They all have articulation, so it's a matter of them mapping. So it's not, that's a great point, though. It, this is not just for, yes, of course, we use the example of sample libraries, right? Because there are so many of them. But it does not have to be just software. It, it should be on hardware as well. With all this additional data being embedded in the I'm assuming DAWs will have to bring additional editors in order to have the, the editors, that that's the beauty. The editors already exist because they already do per node articulation. You can all already edit that stuff in, the, in a DAW. All that work is done. What hasn't been done is the standardization you know, everybody does key switches, and then they, then all of the, that stuff has to be interpreted. But all, of, you know, Mark of the Unicorn, uh, Logic, Q-based, uh, you know, they all do per node articulations already. And that's one of the beauties of it, is it doesn't take that much work for the DAW people. It will take work for the library developers. And that is my final appeal. You guys, some of the people in this audience are some of the most important customers of those sample library companies. Go to your sample libraries that you use all the time. You are customers, you have influence. Tell them they must implement the MINI 2.0 articulation note on profile. That's what we want because these guys spend a tremendous hours and hours and hours of doing the specification and it doesn't do any good until we hear it. Today, we got a chance to hear the first working demonstration of the piano profile and Scott Tips played. And I don't know if you were here, but when he demoed the piano profile and turned it off and played something and then turned it on, it made all the work that we had done worthwhile. It, 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 what specifications don't mean anything. Nobody cares about MIDI. 
I, I mean, I, I was the president of the MIDI Association up until a few weeks ago. I don't care about MIDI. I care what MIDI could do for me. That's it. And if it makes my job easier, which is the whole goal of MIDI 2.0, if it makes your work faster and better, I believe that this, this profile, that you are, I'm gonna say it, you are at a historic moment that when this gets enabled, it is going to change the way that Hollywood scores pictures and games and all of the stuff that we do. And, uh, and so, I mean, I'm counting on you. Call up, and I'm counting on you guys. You are, you are, the, you are the influencers. And I, that was not only a bike drop moment, that was a computer drop moment. Thank you very much for coming. We got another presentation coming up in about 20 minutes, so we're going to stop.